Hello, everyone, and welcome to this Glass Tire Artist Check-In. So uh, this is a series that we're doing, checking in with uh, artists from across Texas, artists who have a connection to Texas uh, during the COVID coronavirus pandemic to just kind of see how everyone's doing. Um, this is, uh, well, this check-in is with an artist who uh, makes great work and also happens to be in Glass Tire's uh, art auction that is coming up soon. Um, it's the artist formerly San Antonio, formerly Houston, and now uh, actually Seattle-based artist, Tommy Gregory. Tommy, welcome. Thank you, Brandon, much appreciated. Thank you, Glass Tire. Hope all's well. So um, I, I know a lot of people know you, especially if they've been in Houston, but tell us a little bit about yourself, about your time in Texas, why you're in Seattle now, how Seattle is right now. Yeah, that's a... I, I miss Texas, glad to still be connected uh, in some way. I'm in Seattle now. Uh, I took a job working for the Port of Seattle as their public art senior manager and curator, specifically at SeaTac. The position was supposed to evolve into a much bigger thing, which is uh, on pause for obvious reasons. But um, yeah, Seattle's great. It's The weather here is unbelievably beautiful. Wish we could be outdoors, but we're in quarantine. Um, but yeah, still making work. Uh, I've had a show, a couple of shows recently. I've been lucky to, to stay busy that way in addition to the public art administrative stuff. But um, yeah, it's a, um, interesting times here. <laughs> well, and so you kind of ended up in Seattle because for a long time you were uh, overseeing the public art at Houston's uh, three major airports. That's right. And before yeah, so that, you were also in San Antonio overseeing public art in San Antonio. Yes, I, I've had a, gosh, it's a, who would have thought it would turn into like a thing? A career. A career. Yeah, it's hard <laughs> to say that word because I wanted art to be the career, but you know, it still is in a way. Uh, but yeah, it um, started off, my intro to public art was with Luisa Menendez when I was at University of Houston. He was my uh, instructor there and I, I went and worked with him in Hondo on the infamous Mustang um, for a summer and a spring break. And um, anyway, that led to me understanding that, I mean, Paul Kittleson also drove this home in me, but public art can be a profession. Uh, it doesn't mean you actually have to be the, the, the uh, public art, what would you say? You don't have to be the artist, you could be a manager. So when I got out of graduate school, that was the, um, that ended up being the route. I applied to a public art commission, I didn't get it, but I ended up managing that project through Public Art San Antonio, which, uh, you know, was there for a good couple years. It was extremely fun working with the San Antonio art community. And then going back to my roots and returning to Houston, uh, where I w worked for HAA for a little stint. And that, that was great to work with some good people there, which led to the airport <laughs> and then led to Seattle. So, um, um, well, and you have, been, you have been making art throughout all of this, too. Oh, yeah. um, tell us a little bit about, so you have a, a piece in our auction coming up. Um, it's kind of a piece, it's, it's a little bit of a two-in-one. It's in a, a bronze cast of an iPhone and a bronze cast of like a USB, um, what, a USB? It's, it's not like a, a power word, connection. But like a yeah. connection. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I've kind of seen a lot of your bronze work around that's kind of before I even I think I really knew you I saw your bronze cast of condoms uh, uh -huh. that were going around tell tell us a little bit, bit about your work in general but also about how kind of the bronze casting thing came around because you're okay. you're doing very traditional like burnout methods of yeah. casting that not a ton of people are doing at least in Houston or in Texas nowadays yeah, my first my first intro to bronze casting was after working with Luis. I learned how to make some decent molds, and I I uh, had a gra uh, undergrad at U of H. I was lucky to uh, score a, a little um, uh, graduate teaching position uh, with um, David Medina, who was the head of the foundry at the Glacelle at the time. So he introduced me into um, lost wax and um, and um, ceramic shell molds. Ceramic shell molds are great for doing burnout. So I was doing tree branches from like, you know, things I could afford, <laughs> free things. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, um, you know, Glacelle was, was um, you know, right next to this um, easy little convenience store. So I needed some materials of an affordable nature. So I ran next door and grabbed a pack of condoms. And I was like, I bet I could cast these. There's more reasons to why, of course, but um, the challenge of, of doing a direct burnout on something so thin was, um, was definitely there and um, helped me creating that series, which 
gosh, I've been doing for 13 years now. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm glad you're aware of those. And uh, <laughs> believe it or not, as long as I've been making them, the first time I've exhibited them in a commercial gallery was just in January. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at Gray Contemporary was your most recent show in Houston, uh, this great gallery over on Colquitt Street. Um, and that, uh, the piece that's in our auction, the, the, the phone and the USB connector were also in that exhibition. Um, that's right. Tell us a little bit about, I, I know a lot of your work kind of comes from technology, like you wouldn't know it from the condoms or from yeah. the, the, the shoes or the hats or the other things you cast. But I mean, phone and kind of social media culture has been a strong component in your work. And how does that kind of relate and how did that come into it? Well, it's weird. It is, I think um, in, the, in my 20s, early 20s, like um, sex and religion were very much uh, subject matter. A lot of crosses, a lot of, or not a lot of crosses, but um, iconography in, in a contemporary sense. Like, um, I mean, all art is about sex, religion, or death, right? I threw yeah. the religion in there. The saying is sex and death, but sex and death, yeah. All, no, it's all tied religion. in. Yeah. Uh, but that, that, um, the kind of uh, planned obsolescence was kind of how I thought about using technology because these were these things that. I was losing my religion, so, so to speak, at the time. Um, I shouldn't say it like that, but I don't know. It made me think of these things that I'm, uh, you know, what, what are icons that have been passed down to me? I remember, um, you know, religion was some of those, like going to church on Sundays. And sometimes, this is funny, but going to church was uh, kind of a routine, was going to churches fried chicken. With my family, the Hispanic side of the family in Austin, we would go to churches. Nice. And I always thought that was funny, you know, churches, churches, fried chicken. So some of the first direct burnouts I did uh, was trying to burn out fried chicken, believe it or not. And I've, I've, I've made some, and I've, they're in some nice little collections, actually. But um, yeah, the, uh, the bronze elements, it's like, you know, you're turning this thing that's, um, you know, single use, whether it's the condom or uh, something you eat. I mean, uh, even a phone in a way because of playing obsolescence and also yeah. because like the disposable nature of our culture. There it is. Yeah, I think that that series was called Disposable Era 2, if I'm not mistaken, because it was, there was one disposable elements, or some disposable elements I was, I was trying to immortalize or, you know, make, uh, make archival. And then um, these were just, it seemed like no-brainers because of how quickly the iPhone 3 led to the iPhone 4, which now we're like at X, you know, is what it's at now. <laughs> but at the same time, I, I, I always try to um, focus on objects that are, you know, that have some inherent beauty in themselves. So uh, believe it or not, I mean, a condom is in a geometric stance, I'm looking at, you know, being inspired by Donald Judd my entire art career, I mean, it's a circle and a square. There's very um, simple elements to that that make it, I think, timeless. And then mm -hmm. iPhones, we've talked about this before, they're very elegantly designed. Oh yeah. So to look at it, um, this, this gym, or this uh, planned obsolete object, um, that you're not going to hand down to your kids one day because they have no value. How do you make it have value using the elegance and the design? I figured casting them bronze was kind of a, a perfect way to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's it's making permanent the thing that will never exist. And like your your daughter or your grandkids, like they're not going to know what an what a first generation iPhone was like and the clunkiness and the kind of, it, it's interesting because, you know, what you're doing is you're also completely taking away any of the functionality in any sense. And it's yeah. just about the design at this point. Yeah. And well, and, and then those who do know what it is, there's like this weird, like this, you're, you get transported. Like when I handle that, that old iPhone three, I'm just like, wow, it's, it's, there's similarities, but it's very different. It's smaller, which, you know, you would think that was the way we'd want to go with technology, but, you know, you want a bigger screen now, mm -hmm. more, 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 more everything. But yeah. um, no, I'm, I'm glad the Glass Tire likes those. Those are, those are some of my favorite pieces. I feel like they're, uh, they're going to be heirlooms from objects that are uh, destined for a landfill. Mm -hmm. So what are you working on right now? You've, you've, you're in oh. Seattle, obviously. You've been kind of sheltering in place for maybe longer than the rest of us at this point. Um, and yeah. you're holed up in a house like many artists, maybe not having access to a studio or not being able to go to the art supply store. So what's, what's okay. kind of keeping you occupied right now? Is it making art? Is it doing other things? Is it the guitar that's on your lap? 
<laughs> well, it's definitely, I've, I've definitely been playing guitar during uh, conference calls at the airport and at the port. But uh, yeah, I've, I've been trying to stay busy. I feel like uh, I don't want my hands to get soft and I've, I've got some scrap wood that I just laminated together. And uh, this was the first one I made before COVID, but I made this little mask, hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. And it, it's inspired by a piece at the Seattle Art Museum. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, I, I, it's just made from scrap wood. So with that kind of vein, I, I made another one. And this one's, again, making masks in the era of COVID seems somewhat appropriate. But, um, you know, carving wood is, is something I haven't done in a long time. So I'm, I'm basically using very uh, rudimentary blades. I'm not, I don't have any awesome carving tools at my disposal right now. So I showed you this little scary one. So yeah, that I that I totally think is like Night King from Game of Thrones. It is a little spooky, <laughs> but I mean, it, you know, it, it's super rough. I'm not trying to do any kind of refined carving, but um, it's passing the time, Brandon, and and uh, I enjoy like making these rough objects and, and thinking about uh, masks and tribalism uh, in our political era right now. Those those are sadly forever ongoing relatable topics. But I've also been doing these. Because I have a seven-year-old and I want to keep her busy. We've been drawing these these targets, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, using butcher paper. This was stuff like you said. Art stores are closed, but uh, hardware stores are still open. Mm-hmm. So you can get like a roll of uh, butcher paper for pretty cheap. And um, I'm using a gift she got from her uncle and aunt. Uh, some Prisma colors I haven't used since high school, you know. But but they work. So we're doing these uh, targets that again. There's these circles and circles um, undulating out. And I'm putting like what, you know, the Texan in me can look at like bullet holes. But in reality, there's, there's interest in, you know, how our connections, so protons and neutrons, electrons. And then also um, it's weird how that circle is making me think of, I put little tentacles on it. That's our COVID-19. It's very COVID. It's COVID art without trying to be COVID art. <laughs> it works that way, but it also is keeping me busy. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I mean, the airport... The day job is busy, like I'm sure Glass Tire is crazy busy mm-hmm. uh, in, in this era because we have to find a way to, to keep things going and, and keep artists and art lovers um, interested. And, you know, we can't forget about ourselves too as artists trying to like, it's, it's easy to, to put down your paintbrush or your sculpting tool um, or your camera and, and, and get engulfed with news. But um, there's only so much of that that you could take in. So some, to maintain some sanity, um, doing these little things, sketches, um, you know, they're, they're cathartic, they're fun. And I don't ever paint. I'm not, like you look at most of my work, I don't paint my bronze pieces. Most yeah. of my patinas are completely, um, you know, I'm trying to go with these really natural, kind of, you know, natural. Um, they're they're like traditionalist bronze pieces in a way. Yeah. Like you do patina them in certain ways, but even the patina is, you know, maybe not like Roman time honored, but it's still traditionalist right. as far as things go. Yeah, yeah, and they're, they're, I hope that I say timeless if that's uh, something that we could say nowadays. But uh, <laughs> I think it, it does stand the test of time. I'm happy with them. So, what's your uh, what's your kind of escape thing right now? I don't know about you, but I, I know a lot of people, myself included, who are kind of doing deep dives into things, whether it's like books, podcasts, like yeah. besides making art. Like, what's your what's your thing right now? Believe it or not, I'm I'm writing like concepts for like is a stimulus plans for art uh for making art projects and art opportunities and they're all just off the top I mean, none of them are probably going to ever see the light of day but hopefully a few will but they're they're plans uh akin to the wpa era uh plans for artists and keeping us busy um that keeps me up at night believe it or not i mean uh and i enjoy it i feel like these mm-hmm. are um, these are things that we may need someday to, to keep um, our elected officials or whoever's the controller of, of these um, capital improvement funds um, to maybe excite them so they'll be supportive of us because we are um, essential in a different way. You know, we talked about this earlier, and um, I think that I say this to people without trying to be snarky in the aviation world is that my profession has been around longer than yours, so please don't. <laughs> they always belittle it, and I have to try to say, you know, it's relevant and it's important. And, you know, at the same time, artists have to pay their bills. We have to eat food. And, um, you know, I think that that's why I'm so glad that you are going forward with the um, auction. Because this is giving an opportunity for people um, to support local, regional, and national artists um, 
uh, at a time where support is greatly needed. Well, thanks. And, you know, one of the things that you said before we started recording was that, you know, imagine being cooped up in your house without art. And I, I know kind of in, in my case, I'm looking around and I'm like, imagine what could go on that empty wall right there because I'm having yeah. to look at the empty wall all the time. So that's, that's kind of part of this also. Yeah. 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 I got it too. And uh, I mean, maybe I'll put a mask there just to suffice, <laughs> but uh, I, I have, I have bought, um, you know, small, small little pieces, but trying to collect, I got paid today. I bought a piece today. Yeah. I have, I'm, I'm uh, it's, it's a, it's a good habit to have. And it's, it's very uh, healthy for me to have uh, visual art in, in direct proximity to us um, living here in this little place. <laughs> it's, uh, it, it, I think we would, we would be a lot less happy without um, some good visual art around us and some music and some great books to read. And I, I, I check glass tire daily. You know, it's like another thing I do. <laughs> if I get up in the middle of the night and I can't go to sleep, I scro <laughs> I'm scrolling, you know, there's, there's no, I mean, Casey writes a blog here in Seattle, but there's, no real outlets. I'm glad that Glass Tire, Arts and Culture, and other periodicals that, that focus on art criticism and promoting artists or, or critiquing artists exist. Yeah. Well, thanks for the kind words, Tommy. That's that's not why we had this call. We had this call to talk about you, but well, <laughs> appreciate it. Yeah, and and thank you for thank you for being involved in the auction and for taking the time today. No, it's my pleasure. Thank you, Brandon, and I hope uh, hope it all goes great. Yeah. We'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye. See ya.